Welcome back to my studio. Uh, my name is Rick Manners. I'm going to give a quick little presentation on some of the really different art projects that I've done over the years. A lot of different clients that I've worked for, like really odd uh, art projects and productions that I've done over the last uh, 25 years or so. My whole art career began as a child. I loved to draw and uh, paint cartoon cars, build cars, model cars. My parents always allowed me to be creative. Here is a, an 8 millimeter film in our basement and my dad had built a double layer section where I put my slot cars and there's actually a painting on the wall. They allowed me to paint on the wall of the basement as long as I was being creative. And here it's me at 10 years old playing with my uh, slot car set and below the slot car set we had built a model drag strip and all the boys from the neighborhood would come along and bring their model cars and we used to build them and play with them and it was a really unique opportunity to hone my artistic skills as an artist and I learned how to draw and paint and hand and eye coordination and in the 70s I also got I played guitar all my life since I was four years old I got my first electric guitar at 10 years old and that's a quick little 8 millimeter video of me playing I took basic art classes in high school this was a mural that I did in the art room at the high school the local high school um, I went to Sheridan College and did three years of media arts and animation and directly from Sheridan when I graduated I got hired by a company called Adventure Communications and I headed up their media production. I was the production manager for Adventure Sight and Sound. I was involved in producing special effects images. We were one of the very first um, production houses that did a 30 second television commercial for Mazda all done out of multi images. I had the unique opportunity in 1983 to meet this gentleman, Robert Bateman, and then he sort of redirected me into learning as much as I could about the, the wildlife and the nature that I love to draw and paint. And we had the opportunity where Eastman Kodak sponsored a film that was done on me as an upcoming artist, and this was a quick little um, uh, introduction part of, of the actual film itself. But one of the things that Robert Bateman taught his students was to learn as much as you can about the wildlife that you are drawing and painting. Learn as much about the animal, learn as much as you can about the environment. And what I had the opportunity was to, I did a lot of work with the Halton Region Conservation Authority and the Mountsburg Wildlife Center is a raptor rehabilitation facility. And this gave me the opportunity to get up close and personal to a lot of the animals, learn as much as I could from the, the biologists that work there. And uh, this was a really unique opportunity to learn as an artist up close and, and do as much sketching and drawing as I could. So this was quite a unique opportunity to handle a lot of these birds of prey as well and, and try and get as much detail and information as I could having the actual live bird right there in front of me. So it was really quite a, a unique opportunity for that to be able to have that happen. And here's a little barn owl named Gordon that I got a chance to do a lot of work with and he was one of the birds that they used in their um, outreach program to take to school children. So a lot of work with Halton Region Conservation Authority. I did a lot of illustrations and sketches for fundraising events for them. Uh, again, I did a lot of art shows there at that facility where people got a chance to come and meet me and see a lot of the work that I was doing with their birds of prey. I did a lot of pencil drawings. These, these were all the different kinds of birds that were in that facility itself. I was also asked to do illustrations of a new building campaign. They were putting a new addition onto the Raptor Hospital. So I did all the sketches. We did a whole program on nesting platforms for ospreys. So here's one of the sketches I did for that, that program itself. I got introduced to the Weimarsh Trumpeter Swan program and I did a lot of illustrations and paintings for their fundraising events. Ducks Unlimited, I, I did a lot of work for about 20 years with Ducks Unlimited. This was an illustration we did for Purple Loose Strife. That was, I also did a mural in uh, Port Perry, which was one of the facilities. And they asked me to paint a mural of Lake Scugog, where the facility is. And this is inside the, the dining area of that facility, showing the, the, the lake early in the morning. They asked me to do the outside of the cow barn. And uh, this was a, the, the place where they kept all their equipment. And each one of those ducks were 12 feet high and their canvas back, the hen and the drake. And then Ducks Unlimited asked me to do a, a special commission for their new facility in Oak Hammock, north of Winnipeg. And they took my painting when the building was being constructed and did a bunch of fundraising items. This was a, a commemorative knife and a piece of the stone itself. Uh, Thunder Bay, I had a studio in Thunder Bay for quite a few years. I did a lot of photographs up there for both the Lakehead Region Conservation Authority. This was a new building they were building, asking me to do some sketches of what the building was going to look like. 
and I did a lot of photographs for them as well as the Ministry of Natural Resources. So I got a lot of uh, experience up there working. This was actually Mission Island Marsh, which is just outside of Thunder Bay, looking out to Lake Superior where the Sleeping Giant Park is. And in that wetland area of Mission Island, I did a several paintings showing this boardwalk and observation areas they were building and looking out the marsh toward the Ontario Hydro Generating Stations. We did a lot of work with Ontario Hydro and the Conservation Authority. They took a painting that I did showing the facility and we built an interpretive uh, display in the center itself so people could open up as a giant puzzle they could open the pieces up and read all about the connection between hydro and the conservation authority I did a lot of paintings for them for fundraising for the conservation authority a lot of fundraising dinners I also got picked up by a distributor in Bob Cage in Ontario and they handled all my retail sales to galleries all over the world for me of both my stones and paintings the Owl Foundation in Vineland, I've done quite a few paintings showing their actual birds in their programs. And here's a series of the, the actual owls from the Owl Foundation that I've done over the years. And they also introduced me to Wildlife Preservation Trust Canada where I did a whole program on burrowing owls for, for them as a fundraiser and public awareness. Humber College is a children's education center in Etobicoke. I did a lot of paintings for them for fundraising. I banded a bunch of my friend artists together and we did a, a fundraising sit-down dinner and fundraiser for that center. A lot of paintings I donated to them showing their facilities and all the different uh, programs that they do there. Inside the Children's Nature Center, I built an actual tree inside as a tool to teach kids about the environment as well as for the sponsors. We made little brass leaves on the tree to attach it to, to help the, all of the sponsors that helped that area. Heart and Stroke Foundation, I did a painting for them for their major summer fundraiser, which is the Rubber Ducky Race, which they hold all over Ontario. And they made a series of posters and changed all the dates and locations for the posters. The SPCA, I got asked to do a wine label for them for their 125th anniversary through Magnata Wines. And we did a red and white wine and the proceeds from that, those two wines went back to the SPCA to help them out. Um, the Stephen Lewis Foundation, they took one of my prints of one of my Africa stones as a fundraiser for them. The Hamilton Philharmonic Orchestra, I did a stone, this stone actually for them for a fundraising auction they were having. Uh, Kestrel Music is a country and western group. I designed their logo for them. Uh, this is actually Nellis Public School here in Grimsby, Ontario. I, I've done one of the biggest projects I've ever worked on and it is a mural that was over 200 feet long all about the neutral Indians who were the original inhabitants of this Grimsby and Niagara area and at one end of the mural there's a little boy with all of the animals that the natives would have relied on for their spiritual beliefs as well as their natural resources and this mural took me seven years to actually do from start to be to finish I did two big eagles in the mural and they're both three-dimensional so they're sticking away from the mural itself one is the golden eagle and the other is the bald eagle and at the other end of the, the mural is the little girl and the grandfather and then Fergie Jenkins came to check out. He's a baseball Hall of Famer who's in, is the, in the American Hall of Fame. He came out to check my mural and then asked me if I'd uh, design a postage stamp for him. He was receiving his order of Canada and asked me to do a commemorative stamp. So there's the Governor General of Canada with Fergie Jenkins with my uh, postage stamp design. I've done several large stones in a little park called Coronation Park here in Grimsby over the years. We did three big stones. Each of these stones are seven feet high, about two tons in weight, and they were placed throughout the, the park itself showing the, animal, the birds from the area. Our local art gallery, I did a fundraiser for them where we actually did a brick campaign for a new building for the art gallery. I got a letter from the uh, Prime Minister of Canada, Jean Chrétien at the time, congratulating me on winning the Citizen of the Year for Grimsby. Our Citizen of the Year, Rick Manners, uh, started uh, in the Stone, Stone Shop Museum in Grimsby in 1996. Four years later, Rick finds himself not only involved, um, not only in his chosen field of wildlife biology, but also with many other community organizations. At a, as a creative uh, designer, Rick puts his abilities to work in the production of both public awareness and fundraising programs for up to 30 different groups. Many awards and achievements have been accomplished over the years for both uh, his artistic talents and also his volunteer work. Obviously, the year 2000 marks a special milestone in Rick Man for Rick Manners as he's honored for by Grimsby for Citizen of the Year. 
Some of the achievements that Rick has done, uh, the SPCA fundraising campaign, um, he belongs to the Weimarsh uh, Trumpeter Swan fundraising program. Uh, this year marks the 14th year that Rick has been featured as a conservation artist for Ducks Unlimited. Uh, Rick is one of the arch uh, jurors for the annual Raptor Fest. He is a founding member for the Canadian Wildlife and Animal Art Group, artist coordinator for the Wildlife Preservation Trust Canada, Humber College Community Service Award, Heart and Stroke Foundation Donation Support Award, Ducks Unlimited Outstanding Teal Award, Canadian Red Cross Volunteer Humanitarian Award, in 1999, Jim Dunsmuir Annual Fellowship Award from the Kinsman Club of Grimsby. Ladies and gentlemen, our Citizen of the Year. It was quite an honor to actually win that award, um, being the Citizen of the Year for the year 2000 here in Grimsby, Ontario. So I was quite honored to win that award. Uh, some other projects I've done, this was a mural I did for a company in Toronto in their boardroom of, of Turn 1 of Michigan International Speedway. I also got asked to do a country and western singer's guitar when Dale Earnhardt passed away. Uh, the Red Hill Creek Expressway, the engineering company asked me to do a painting showing what the, the road was going to look like for their boardroom. The local uh, Coast Guard Auxiliary, I've done several paintings for them showing their uh, new boat they were building as a fundraiser. Uh, Kin Canada had a national convention in Niagara Falls. I did a series of paintings showing Niagara Falls with, with the Peregrine Falcons. Our local Junior C Hockey Club, I've done their program cover for about five years, taking different animals and actually putting them into hockey jerseys. It was a lot of fun. And then they actually asked me after that to do an actual commemorative mural inside the, the hockey arena, showing the history of the club from the 1800s right through to present day. And here's a, a piece of the mural there with a, being revealed at the opening of the game that year. I've done everything from the bottom of swing pools. This was a, a done in porcelain for the Washington Redskin Football Club. I did a, a mural on Young Street in Toronto for Super Pet, which is a pet store, which is an old theater that they asked me to do a mural inside. Uh, we did a, a waterfall at the Welcome Center here in Grimsby at the Tim Hortons, an indoor waterfall. Uh, this was a stone I did for the uh, McMaster Sick Kids Hospital fundraising event for their teddy bear picnic. I've been quite honored to have a lot of my paintings uh, reproduced in magazines and articles throughout the years. This was a life-size Bengal tiger I did for Ridley College in St. Catharines. Their logo was actually the tiger. Uh, Raptor Fest was a really neat uh, uh, event that we helped sponsor and it's actually um, an interesting event all about birds of prey. The 15th annual Raptor Fest took over the Peach King Arena in Grimsby this past weekend. This is a festival, it's a one-day festival, all about birds of prey from the Ontario area. So we have all different types of conservation groups that are here today, and artists, and craftspeople, and demonstrations for kids to see, and a little bit of everything, all about nature and conservation and the environment here in Ontario. When I first came to Grimsby here, uh, probably close to 18 years ago now, I noticed that there were quite a few different conservation groups, wildlife rehabilitation centers all in the area, and everybody was kind of doing their own little thing. So a gentleman by the name of Rick Quirk and myself decided, let's get a bunch of our artist friends together, and let's invite all these conservation groups under one roof for the general public to come and see and meet all these different people who are doing something good for our environment and the wildlife here in, in Ontario. It's, the initial response was fabulous. Our first show was down at Prudhomme's Landing in Vineland. And we had a complete, it was a one day event as well. We had seminars going on. And eventually as we went on, we kept a children's art contest. The one main focus was I wanted to get all of the children in the area to do a piece of artwork to do with birds of prey. And that was the only stipulation. It had to be a hawk, an eagle, an owl, a falcon, or a vulture. And they could draw or paint any of these items. And we would have an actual competition from kindergarten right through to high school. And we'd have awards for all the kids and it gets them involved in learning a little bit more about these beautiful birds that inhabit our Niagara area. For links to some of the groups involved in the event, visit raptorfest.ca. In Grimsby, for The Source, I'm William Kelly. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun over the last few years, so that's just a quick presentation of some of the odd projects that I've done in the way of art and graphics art, and uh, it's been a, a lot of fun, and thank you for watching my video.